Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Mac and T Show Podcast. Here are your hosts, Ryan McKay and T. David. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows. Sports and world news. Coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian McKay and T. Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We're going to the top. We're becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show. Welcome back to the Mac and T Show podcast. We are a week later than advertised, but nevertheless, we're ready to go. T, how you how's how's everything going up there in Oxford? It's going, Lord, it's going. The chillings are back. Well, actually, they've been back for a while now, but we back moving and shaking. Nice, nice. Lots, of, lots of no parking going on everywhere. Oh yeah, the parking is always bad. Yeah, and then buildings. As much as the buildings are going up there on campus, I'm sure it's even worse now. No, they just it's they trying to move all parking on the outskirts of campus. And how's the Walmart situation now that y'all a couple weeks in? Walmart situation. Yeah, it's always it's packed. Situation. Oh, I don't go into Walmart any time that it's going to be packed. I'm in there at 7 or something in the morning. Right. I don't have a Walmart situation. A lot of people might. I don't. <laughs> you are the smart one in the group. <laughs> um, first of all, for, let me get started. Before we get started, I want to say a quick shout out to my sister. It is her birthday today. She is the big oh, 29, one year away from the big 3-0. It's where she joins the elite company. <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't know what that is for sure. Yeah, you did. You did a decade ago. <laughs> yeah, thanks for trying to throw me under the bus. <laughs> all the way, yeah. all the way. <laughs> but guess what? It's plenty of people that didn't even live to, to see to my age, so I'm I'm really happy. Yes, how and, about that? And I will put it out there that <laughs> that T is probably top five. I'm gonna say top five of the most. Fittest people at her in her age oh, bracket. Oh Lord, that's hilarious. Look, look, I'm, I'm petting. I done already thrown you in the bus, so I'm pulling you back from the wheel. Oh, you're pulling me back. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get it started. Uh, first off, I just wanted just a quick thought on this past Friday. They had the 2016 Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame class inductions. I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on the class. Um, they had Shaquille O'Neal. Allen Iverson, Yao Ming, Cheryl Swoops, Tom Izzo from Michigan State, and uh, the longtime Bulls owner Jerry Reinsdorf were kind of like the biggest names. Um, well, I'm glad you told me who Jerry was because I was, I was going to ask who was that. <laughs> but okay, that's good to know. I'll say this. All the people in Asia might not like me right now. Why is Yao on now? Um, he, ain't, he was big, and he, but he was hurt like. He ain't really do accomplish nothing. Right. Am I missing something? I I think exactly for what you how you started off that statement. The fact that he was <laughs> uh such a big deal coming from China, you know, kind of being the first big time Chinese NBA player. Uh, I think his induction is more for what should have been than what was. I don't think that's how we do it. Or no, it, it, it should it's be done. Not, okay. it, it, right. It's probably not the, the greatest way to do it, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it, it was what should have been instead of actually what was. Uh-uh. I can't have it. <laughs> I can't. I, uh, because I, he wasn't terrible, but he wasn't good. I don't think he should be in no Hall of Fame. Right. I didn't get a chance to see all of the speeches quite yet, but I did get to see Shaq, Allen Iverson, Cheryl Swoops' uh, speech, uh, and I saw a little bit of Yow's. And before I get into the other ones, let me since we're on Yow right now, um, Bill Walton was one of the three people that you know. I'm glad um, before I start. I'm glad that they cut out the presenters actually speaking. That cut down a lot of time. Um, they just kind of call them, you know, kind of the welcome. You know, they're welcoming them to the class. And welcome him to the Hall of Fame. So Bill Walton was one of the people who welcomed him. And Bill Walton, everybody else in this place, 
had suits, ties. Bill Walton had on a polo, and I swear I think he had on tennis shoes. Now, you know he got bad feet. Now, I don't know why he ain't having no clothes, but I can understand why he had on tennis shoes. Right, and yeah, uh, and I did <laughs> I did take into account his, his, his feet problem. And, you know, as my dad said it, he, he you know, Bill Walton's a long time been known as a hippie, so I guess I could give him a pass on <laughs> on his dress attire, but come on, man. Okay, he. I, I don't give him a pass for for that. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a pass for the shoes, but yeah. okay, if y'all want to give him a pass? Go um, for it. Let's see. I thought by far the most, you know, shocking was Allen Iverson's speech. I thought he was very good, very humble, very emotional. Um, I mean, he he literally was tearing up throughout the whole thing. I thought his was very good. Another shocking thing, because I just, and, and it shouldn't be that shocking, because I listen to his podcast every week, Shaq was amazing. I mean, he was hilarious. He had a lot of good jokes. Um, and if you haven't, if anybody who hasn't seen it yet, I'm sure it's on YouTube or somewhere by now. You need to check it out. Um, they're replaying it, I think, just about every day this week on NBA <laughs> TV. <laughs> so, yeah, it's definitely worth t- checking out. Cheryl Swoops. One of my all-time favorites, because, you know, I'm a long-time comments fan. Um, it was really good of her. I liked how she had her presenters were Nancy Lieberman Klein and Van Chancellor, who you know, <laughs> you know is, is a great friend of mine and, and a great friend to the podcast. Buddy Lee in the building. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Yeah, I, I thought this was, you know, a pretty pretty good overall class, you know, being okay. put together. Excuse me. Go ahead. Have Cooper gone into the – is Cynthia yeah. Cooper in there? Yes, yeah, she's okay. in there. All right, I'm feeling better. All right, go ahead. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, so I thought overall it was a decent class. Um, you know, a lot of big-time names. Um, Tom Izzo, I think. Yes, yeah, he, he always had a Michigan State boys. he find a way. Yeah. Every year, the Flintstones with uh, what the little short guard that he ain't really play long in the league. Yes. Yeah, and Mo, he, he and Mo found Peterson. a way. Yes, he did. Uh, they snuck in the like, final four a couple of years ago, didn't he? When yeah. they really yeah. wasn't on anybody's radar, and then he he do a good job up there. Yeah, I, I just think he's well deserved to be in that honor. Um, but moving on from that, let's jump into a little college football talk. We had the first two weeks already in the books. Your Gators jumping out two and zero on the season. First of all, let's not say jumping out, okay? Because they should have won both of them games. Yes. The first game was bad with the rain thing, so I gave it a little a break. Well, y'all had y'all had some emotion in that game. They they named the field after the old ball coach. He did the little. Them children ain't know nothing about no Steve Spurrier. Look, (laughs) I'm just trying to help you out. (laughs) Most of them kids probably was like. Yeah, elementary school was something when Steve was. They don't know nothing about Steve. Uh, so anyway, yeah. they might. They might. But yeah, the they... rain didn't help. And it was the kids' quarterback's first, you know, game as a full-time starter. So mm-hmm. I wasn't really taking too much off of that. Kentucky, I was surprised they didn't put more of a fight up this weekend. I was because I just thought they would play better than they – they didn't come to play. Yeah, especially after they lost to USM the week before. I thought that, you know, they would maybe regroup and, and give Florida a little bit of a game. Considering, now, I understand this is supposed to be a rivalry, but let, let's be clear. Florida just won their 30th consecutive win against Kentucky. So, okay. there's, there's no rivalry okay. there. It's, it's, it's not. Well, who said it was a rivalry? They talked about it on the telecast, and I couldn't. But they didn't say it was a rivalry, did they? They just probably said it was just like one of the because it's been 1960 since Notre Dame was beating Navy or somebody like 40 sometimes. So if we keep playing well, we can probably get into the third spot because I don't know if we're gonna beat them. No, I feel like they beat them 40 times or something crazy. <laughs> I, I think maybe it was just 40 the, years in a row or something. The fact, That's, yeah, I think it was just the fact that they're SEC East. You know, competitors. Maybe that was what they were trying to play up. Yeah, but 30, uh, t- 30 times in a row. No, no. Mm-mm. And if Tennessee, we need to beat them so we can get them off our rivalry list because 
while I still don't like them, but they they falling off. But I, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Huh. My my uh my old Miss Rebels coming to this coming weekend where they host Alabama at one and one. Uh, yeah, we had a a great first half. I won't say great, but a very good first half against Florida State. Second half, defense fell off. Uh, Florida State woke up. They took us in the first game. Uh, Walford was what it was. I think me and you could have got out there and beat Walford. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how we do against Alabama. We beat them the last two years. Uh, got a whole new, you know, a whole new kind of uh, wide receiver core. But a bunch of uh, Let me just say this. Go ahead. Mister, I'm the best quarterback in the nation. Don't get on, buddy, buddy, with the white suit. Don't, don't do it. Don't if, do it. If you listen, <laughs> which I doubt you are, you're not playing close to like anything like a, the best quarterback in the nation. And it ain't because your offensive line don't do a good job, because it's not like you scrambling around every time you take the ball from under center or whatever. Right. And. If they play anything like they played against Warford, because I went to that game, Alabama is going to come in here and roll, pun intended, all over us. Okay? And I just, I don't want to see it, but they play, they look awful. They don't even look good. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, so Maybe they was looking forward to this Alabama game, and they just said, just got out there and said, well, let's just get this one over, because they look bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that's what it was, and maybe they were just, you know, because they did. I, I did notice that, you know, that we, and obviously it was Wofford, so they could have done this. They, they sw- they switched in and out. You know, they did their third and fourth team, you know, a couple times early in the game, wide receivers, running backs. So they were switching people in and out. I guess he was people. just trying to stay healthy. Right, and I think that's probably <laughs> what it was. And like you said, they, they they were not up for Wofford at all. They clearly were looking to this next week. Got a whole week to prepare, so, hey, howdy tidy. <laughs> Good luck. I'd like to see a three-peat, but, right. again, if they don't, if they play like they did, I, I just ain't seeing because it, it just didn't look good. Um, Speaking of not looking good, what's – What's your take on what's going on in Baton Rouge, LSU? You know what? I can't understand. It's like a couple of teams in the country. You always be like, Florida. Why they just can't find a a running back? Like in the years past, we would have great wide receivers, good quarterback, and then just kind of mediocre running back. Right. LSU has always had trouble finding a quarterback. Yes. Or else. And that's still holding true. And I don't understand why some kid wouldn't want to go there. Because even though he liked to run, they will throw it. When they had, what's the black guy that, the tall six five or six guy, six guy that went to the Raiders and then he just then Jamarcus Russell. When they had him, they was throwing it. But I can't understand. It's a lot of good little quarterbacks out here that I don't understand why LSU ain't on their radar. Jamarcus Russell, he was 6'5 tall and 6'5 wide by the time he got through playing with the Raiders. Yeah, he was huge, but, <laughs> I mean, um, he just, he proved that they would throw the ball at yes. the least. And Can you imagine what they'd have been the years they had Jarvis Landry and, and Odell Beckham if they'd have had a quarterback? Right, I mean, they just can't seem to find a quarterback. Yeah. And it's like Tennessee back in the day, Tennessee women's basketball. Could not find a point guard. They would have all these stars and they just could not get a point guard. Right. You'd be like, Pat, you can't. You got good forwards, small forwards, center. You can't get a point guard to right. go with this. Nope. We just let, uh, what's the name? Uh, Parker bring it up. Or we'll just let, uh, what, what's the other one that won? Like three. Hose Claw and them. Hose Claw. Yeah. We'll let Hose Claw. Like, they just. I don't know. I guess that's just sometimes people's Achilles heel. They can't be good at everything. Yeah. LSU can't find a quarterback. I mean, and Leonard Fournette set out this past week against Jacksonville State. I'm sure if it was somebody else, he probably would have played. But well, yeah, then he had a little, little injury. A little ankle injury. Yeah, they, they don't, just don't waste him. Go ahead and let him sit out. Right. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, because coming into the season, they were a Final Four playoff pick. 
That ain't, I don't know who picked that. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think everybody just wants uh, Fournette to be in there. But uh, speaking I, yeah. of playoffs, I know it's very early, very, very early. But I want to just two weeks in, let's go and you and I pick our, our, our picks for our early predictions for the for the playoffs. Well, I refuse to play in this part of the game because Clemson barely beat Troy, uh, Troy. Yes, Troy, Troy, the men of Troy. Now, Troy ain't no slouch because they got, they got nice facilities and they got a nice team. Right. But you are Clemson. Mm-hmm. You came from – you didn't lose that many people when you from the championship game last year. You can only beat Troy by six. You didn't even look good against your first game. Right. So, uh, Alabama, while they did destroy USC, then they came back. They didn't look good yesterday. Oh, or when it was Saturday. They kind of played around like they was looking forward to coming to Oxford themselves. Uh, I mean, I ain't seen nobody that's just been like, oh, yeah, you got it. TCU lost. Oh, Oklahoma, didn't they lose their first game? Yes, to Houston. I can't. So I'm not. I refuse to play. <laughs> <laughs> I need more. I need more information. Well, fine. I'll play this early, and then you can play when you get more more information on your team. I'll play, <laughs> and I'm gonna pick the two teams you just mentioned, Alabama and Clemson, as two. And then on the other side, I'm gonna go with the team that that beat my my Rebels in Week One, Florida State. And my fourth and final pick. If the Big 12 don't call them soon and bring them into the league, the SEC needs to. Houston Cougars. Those what? boys, they, they they beat the devil. out of, I mean, Not the devil, but they, they outplayed Oklahoma in week one. Well, can I just say this? Uh, how do you think Florida State, like Florida State or Clemson going to beat each other? And one of them probably going to lose another game. So I'm just going to leave it at that. that. I don't know how you think both of them going to get it. I told you it's the very early <laughs> predictions for the playoffs. Very, very, very early. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, oh, so moving on to the professional ranks. We had our week one almost in the books. We got two games tonight. Well, one game because I don't expect their late game to be very good. Oh, my. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so you're yeah, almost in the books week one. A uh, couple of thoughts on uh, how yesterday went. I want to talk real quick about the Dallas Cowboy and the rookies. You got Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott making the very first start of quarterback running back combination for Dallas since 1969 with Roger Staubach and Brent Hill's daddy, Ke- uh, Calvin Hill. Um, just for pe- <laughs> just for people that might not know, <laughs> I bet he's sitting somewhere thinking, you know what, my name is Calvin Hill for a reason. <laughs> anyway, um, I I thought they looked okay. They were playing the Giants, so you know the Giants' defense is always suspect, even though they've made a lot of changes, a lot of put a lot of money into getting free agents to help their defense. Um, Lost the game on the final play where Prescott hits Terrence Williams. He doesn't run out of bounds. And that's what I couldn't understand. I was like, son, this is not college. The ball, it don't stop when you get a first down. You have got there. And it was four or five seconds. I think he could have made it. Even if he just fall and kind of fake fumble out of bounds to do something. Now, they might have said you threw it out of bounds so well. Right. I just, Terrence Williams has been in the league too long not to know he needs to get out of bounds right there. He got he got to get on over. But, um, yeah, I can't believe he fell down like, oh, let me get down so we can get the, I was like, dude, four seconds, y'all are not about to get no set and do that in four seconds. Yeah. But, okay. Um, a lot of people last week, a lot of ESPN personalities, I'm sure just trying to make a name for themselves, may mention that Dak Prescott could very well just usurp Tony Romo whenever he's healthy, and Tony might not get his job back. Well, Dak played very well. He, he did what he's supposed to do, which is not turn the ball over. He had a great first series. Um, they gonna have to. I know they try to get um, 
the, the wide receiver, whatever his name is, I can't think of. Right it's Bryant. They be trying to get him the ball and just making him like some of them throws. You can see them just trying to make Dez happy and just throwing right. the ball, but they gonna have to, Dez gonna have to find a way to get over. Because um, some of the plays is just be like, that's not a good decision. That's not you are wasting downs trying to get him the ball. Uh, as far as if he on the roll, I mean, I don't see them just taking the ball out because Romo come back and he ain't played in all these games. Right. I mean, that I, wouldn't even make no sense. I just think it's going to be how he's playing at the time, what their record is, right. uh, and how 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 happy Dez is. Because one catch for eight yards is all he had yesterday. And That's now, his fault. He, right. He, like, right. he like, had he opportunities. He plays where the boy missed him. He right. just wasn't open. Get right. open, the boy throw it to you. All right. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next thing, Jameis Winston. Um, I've been listening to a lot of sports talk earlier this morning. A lot of people are, I think, overblowing it because I don't think the Falcons are very good defensively. They're um, not good. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> but he had four touchdowns to four different receivers yesterday against the Falcons, and a lot of people are saying, you know, he could be the next uh, elite quarterback. And I kind of like in his rise, you know, because he will be a good player. He's going to be a very good player. He is. He is a very good player and going to be great one day. Kind of like in his rise to that of Cam Newton, where they had a lot of issues college football wise. Okay, Cam Newton, would like, and I'm gonna interject on Cam's behalf. While Cam did have some issues, he was never accused of sexual assault in anybody. And I just want to go on record as to saying, oh, yeah. I feel like that's far worse than a computer issue. And yeah, you shouldn't be stealing or whatever happened with that laptop in Florida. Right. Uh, but go ahead. No, no, I and. and, and very different circumstances, obviously, but um, with both having the off the field issues coming into the NFL and kind of, you know, changing their image a little bit. And if he keeps on this path, I think he has the opportunity to be great. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see next week because he's going to go up against uh, I think the Cardinals defense. Uh -huh. So it'll be a it'll be a little different story, I believe, next week. Yeah, you know, and people are quick to jump on the bus. If he had a through four interception, they would talk about how terrible he was. They mm -hmm. Just he ain't been in the league long enough to talk about the league. Go sit down. I guess they couldn't find nothing else to talk about. Right. Um. Our Forty Niners. Uh. Can Can we just fast forward and give us the first pick in the draft? <laughs> just Just go ahead and give well, it to me. Well, no. What what are we gonna do with the first pick in the draft, Brian? I don't know. That's the other thing. I don't know who we want. What are we gonna do with? I hope we don't ruin their life. Look, we gonna ruin their life. <laughs> 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 who want to come and play for us? Yeah, I don't. We know. consistently making bad decision after bad decision. Uh, Why did we just hire this man to be the coach? Yeah, and I, well, and I thought it was to resurrect. Tyler Kaepernick, but then he's uh, not even a starter. And the the team wasn't good. He wasn't good in Philly. What was gonna make him change because he came to, to the Bay? I don't know. I, but hey, we 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 had an offensive a uh, defense, offensive defensive line coach. What was what was Thompson? Defensive line coach. Yeah, and that was a bust from the jump. So. That, uh, I'm so sick of them. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. But uh, as I brought up Colin Kaepernick, I want to transition to our very final topic. Um, Kaepernick. First, he sat down during the National Anthem. The next game, you know, he kind of took a knee. And his his uh, reasoning, he's protesting uh, basically the treatment of African American and people of color. Uh, by, you know, kind of rogue police officers and that whole Black Lives Matter, you know, situation. Uh, a lot of people have joined in on his cause. Um, I thought, honestly, and I'm not one that's going to voice an opinion outwardly, uh, you know, right off the jump, I'm going to find out more information before I say it. But I know when I first heard what he did, I said, oh, no, oh, no, that ain't good. That ain't good at all. Then I really was impressed with the fact that he took the criticism the way he did and, you know, 
took some advice from people, and I thought, as far as the kneeling situation, I thought that was much more respectful, and I think a lot of people kind of got off his back. I think a lot of people were too quick to judge him for what he was doing on on the basis of what he was doing and not what he was doing it for, and I think people lost that in translation. I thought it was much more respectful for him to do the kneel situation the next game and what he's been doing since. Um, I just... What, what what what's the next step? I mean, doing all these protests, that's well and good for bringing, you know, the cause to the forefront, but where are we going with this? I mean, how... Well, the problem is it didn't bring the cause to the forefront because mm-hmm. the media did the switch and bait, bait and switch, right. and so they did make it about the issues that he was doing it for. They made it about, you are disrespecting the flag. So let's visit you disrespecting the flag. Number one, you see... Old Navy, you see a bunch of t-shirt companies, apparel people that would have shirts that had a flag on it. If you look at flag etiquette, that is the one thing you are not supposed to use, the flag for marketing purposes. Okay, let's drive around your neighborhood. How many flags do you see tattered, torn, and dirty? The f- Old Glory is not supposed to be hanging up tattered, torn, or dirty. She is supposed to be folded. You don't throw her in the trash. She's supposed to be folded and burned. Okay, in a respectful manner, not burn like some people are saying they hate America. Right. Okay. Uh, when these Olympians win championships or goals or whatever you want to say, are you supposed to drape the flag around you at any point in time? No. But nobody says anything about that disrespectful movement of using the flag. So the media do what they want to do. And since they don't want to talk about race issues and they don't want to talk about how we treat our uh, veterans, Let's forget about that and let's just make it about how disrespectful it is of him to not stand for the national anthem. When was the last time you was at your house and heard the anthem and stood up? Never. Okay, so I can't. Go sit down somewhere. All y'all, Drew Brees, he made me mad. I got off his team for a little while. Maybe one tenth day I'll get back on it. All these coaches are mad at Harbaugh. Oh, I don't respect the motivation or what he did. Okay, I'm fine with you not liking that he didn't stand up. But you coach too many black males that could be get and pulled over and wind up in a situation where they shot or whatever. For you to say you don't respect his motivation, the reasoning behind he, what he's doing, and then you try to backtrack on your tweet. Come on, man. Right. So the media just made this way too much. Nobody would even know that boy wouldn't stand up if the media didn't blow that way out of proportion. And then they try to over look over what the real issues are. And talk about the flag, because again, I, people do so many disrespectful things to the flag, and don't nobody say nothing. But now he didn't stand up because the anthem play, and y'all just losing y'all mind. Go sit down. Yeah. Next, I, I think um, what the Seahawks did yesterday was was very good. Uh, I liked how that you know they all lined up arm in arm, white black, white black. That was that was something impressive to see, and it had a lot more. You know, it had a lot to do with September 11th yesterday right. as well. Um, I like you said, the media has really just taken this and run with it. Um, both ways. I I, I got a little. You know, I love his and hers because you do as well, and we try to kind of pattern our show after it in some ways. Um, I got a little perturbed with Michael Smith this past week. What did he say? I ain't even listened to them in a while. Go ahead. And and it's just I I don't he didn't mean it this way, and that's why. Yeah, I, see, you go. You don't know how he meant it. Go ahead. How did you get it? Right. Okay. Um. Um. How I'm, did I'm, you take? It? Okay. <laughs> he he tried to kind of tie the Black Lives Matter movement and um, his son's love for Dwayne Wade. Uh, his son is big Dwayne Wade fan. Read Dwayne Wade's book, and he asked. Michael, he asked his dad, he said, um, you know, why did those cops bust into his house when he was at a young, when Dwayne Wade was at a young age? And, and Michael said he struggled with how to approach that, that and how to, you know, make that situation, you know, what it was and how to explain the situation. And what he was, like, he was, like, saying, basically calling the cops rogue cops. That situation was not a rogue cop situation. If you read, if you read the book, if you know the, the backstory on Dwayne Wade's mother about his mama being a drug dealer, drug dealer. I mean, and, and big time drug. That was cops doing their job. 
that was not a road cop situation. And and the more he kept talking about it, I'm thinking to myself, either your either your uh, your research is bad or somebody who's doing the research for you is bad. And I, you really need to move on from this because you are you are dead wrong on the, you say a lot of right stuff during this whole situation, but that that wasn't a road cop situation. Now, Dwayne Wade's mother has completely turned her life around. She is a pastor and great redemption story. But that was a situation where she was a drug dealer who, you know, obviously was in a... In, in, in she doing what she needs to do to survive. And that's still what it was. I mean, Chicago is not a nice place to be in. And you, some people do what they do to survive. Some of us won't sell drugs to survive. We'll just do whatever. But some people be like, I got to feed my kids. I got to put a roof over my head. If this is how I can do it, I'm going to do it. And and that's and that's basically what he could have said. I mean, don't act, don't make that situation more than it was. Is what I'm like. What really perturbed me about his whole thought process and even bringing it up because it wasn't like it wasn't a road cop situation. That 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 was doing their job. You know, she like you said, she was doing what she had to do to survive, and that's all you could have had to say about it. You know, sometimes you get so bad down on your luck that you'll do anything. And like you said, some people won't go that far. Some people will. She took she took that path, and not like you said, you, you could have tied in the whole redemption story on how she is now. I mean, there's just so many ways, so many other situations he could have brought up besides that one because it, it just didn't fit the situation for what he was talking about at all, in my opinion. Yeah, he he. I don't know. I, I, I didn't even I didn't see that episode, but yeah. We know that, yeah, I, I saw that she was a drug dealer on something, and I didn't realize that, it, like, I ain't never really thought about Dwayne's mother, period, so. Right. But then she talked about it, oh, when I, they did something undisputed or something mm-hmm. with uh, the uh, other co-partner of uh, Michael on that show, uh, Jamel. Jamel Hill. Jamel. Mm-hmm. And so, that's when she talked about she had done some things, and then I found out she used to sell drugs, whatever. Right. Uh, I don't know why he brought that up, and, and that ain't got. We don't know what they got to do with Black Lives Matter. Um, it, it didn't. It didn't have anything to uh, do with the movement. That's what. That's what kind of bothered me. I mean, th- th- there was just too many other instances he could have brought up to make his point, and he you know, he just lost me on. But that. how did they get on Black Lives Matter? Period. Just talking like, about the whole Colin Kaepernick and the whole protesting uh, thing. Uh, uh, that and you know that that's where it all it just led to that because of the. You know, the situations that's going on in Chicago that's been ongoing for years. I mean, it's not like this is brand new. Um, right. You know, and then his his son's love for Dwayne Wade is how he kind of brought that into the, oh. the conversation. So there's plenty of people having to have that conversation and don't know how to articulate it. And that's on these, like when, uh, what was that, August the 8th week when two people got killed for no reason. Um mm-hmm. uh, And you got to explain to your child why a man just sitting in his car is getting shot. By an officer because he breached for his wallet or whatever happened with Philando Castile. I mean, and I don't heard women and they've been close to tears trying to explain like how do I tell my son? I mean, and I'm nervous every time my son goes out if he's 17 or 18 or and I'm calling and I don't want to be that mother, but you worried about did you make it from A to B? Are you headed back home because you don't want to be a, the next hashtag? Right. And so that's conversations that non-minorities like whites don't have to have. I don't know that Hispanics have to have that conversation. Yeah, it's, I just, uh, what's the next step? What's it going to take for the... Well, I know the next step is not hiring somebody for a job. Would you ever hire uh, a lawyer? To come and, and, and call a lawyer and say, oh, I, I got some plumbing issues. Can you come to the house? No. Okay. So would you ever call a school teacher that knows nothing about cars to come and fix your car? Not at all. Would you go to a dentist that used to be uh, a beautician? Or how is it that we got somebody that's never been in politics running for the president? <laughs> I knew where you were going with that. <laughs> I'm just saying, come on, America. Like, all jobs have some, like, scope of, like, you have to know the job. <laughs> what? 
more importantly, is he fit? He don't have a JD. Do, do we? Because maybe I'm wrong. Does he have a JD? I don't think so. So he don't know anything much about the law besides whatever he think he know from whatever reason he might know it. Um, he ain't been the mayor of nothing. He ain't been no governor, no senator, nothing. Look, shouldn't you have some kind of uh rules on who can even run for president? <laughs> like, what kind of... I'm just saying, Brian. Um, so until we can, we can't even find a good, suitable person to run for president. Out of 300 million people, this is all we. This the best we can do. And this, and I don't want to. I don't want to say. I know that. we don't want to talk a lot about politics. No, but I'm no. just saying, in principle, but forget how silly stuff he does, and he seems to be. He just has no sense of. And again, you would not hire him. To teach your kids, <laughs> you wouldn't ask them to come and do plumbing. If your lights was messed up, you wouldn't call Trump and say, "Can you come? I think we got an electrical problem at the house." How is it you okay with him running your country? I'm just saying, okay. <laughs> and, and and you brought up the silly things that he does. If he would just cut that out, this is the sad part. If he would just cut all that out, he will be the next president. That's right. If he wasn't so making bad choices and I guess being who he is with this sense anything and derogatory about anybody. He don't care if it's women, blacks, Hispanics, he don't care and he'll just say it. If he calling America babies, a bunch of babies, who said like what president have you ever heard or potential president have you heard use any of this terminology? But again, I'm just back on the fact that he's never done anything in politics and he has no law degree. And how do you even get to be money. an option? Money, money talks. Money, money, money. But he ain't using his money. Yeah. And most of the people in his party, not going to, like, big people in his party, they said that's why Bush, well, I've heard, Bush didn't speak at the uh, Republic Convention because they was like, uh uh. Yeah, there's a there's a ton of people in his party who didn't even want him to be the, the nominee. So how is it y'all couldn't find a way to get somebody else in the forefront? Yeah, the November is gonna be an interesting month. I, I'm so sad. It's so in, it's sad. I, it's too many countries laughing at me as an American right now. <laughs> you too. Look, and you too. Like America, this is the, the best y'all can do. Because then we're going to get, since I've been on the Republic, so I'm going to get on Democrat. Now we got the, the the liar who, instead of just saying, I made a mistake, I shouldn't have kept these on my private server. Oh, let's throw Colin Powell under the bus and say, oh, he told me to do it. What? Come on, man. Right. Just own up to the fact that you did something wrong and just say, I did something wrong, I know better, and I do better. People would respect that more than, oh, such and such told me to do it. Oh, I didn't do it. Oh, all this. Just say you did the wrong thing. And what's wrong with her health? I just saw something about a health scare when I just was walking in the, in the building. She, I believe, had pneumonia. I'm not sure if that's correct. That's the last thing we need is for her to die. And now Trump ain't got nobody running against him. Yeah. How does that work anyway? She, what she, would happen? Uh, she left... Um, she she left the the nine eleven memorial situation the thing they had in New York yesterday early and I think that's what drove everybody to questioning well, why did she just get up and leave it, she apparently is battling pneumonia or something like okay, that. Okay, again, if she God forbid, the lady died, but if she was to die, what would happen then? Who would be the Democratic? Not the How does that work? Not the Libertarian, uh, whatever his name is. It didn't even know. Uh, when he uh, was, was that a place in Syria, didn't even know what it was. Oh, I can't. How do you, I can't how do you get you're on? Than this how do you, you how do you get on national TV and not even know when you when the city in Syria is brought up? What what it is? Oh, no. I mean, he literally asked the guy, hey, "What is that?" I can't. <laughs> I can't. We have got to be better than this, people. We are better than this. Please. Can Charles Barkley run for president yet? We might as well, because he has no background in politics. Why not? 
Kobe should have ran. And at least, at least he's halfway admitting, you know, he might be wrong. Right. But he doubts he it. Doubt it. <laughs> he might be. Oh, man. Well, I think that's going to wrap up our show for today. Um, It's, go- it's great to be back. I, I, I can't see you yet, T, because, you know, you, you don't have a camera, but it's it's great to hear your voice. And it's also great to be a Florida Gator. Oh, I'm sorry. I just thought throw that in since we talked about the greatness and all. So. Well, just call me the setter in volleyball. I set it up <laughs> and you spiked it down. Spike. <laughs> oh, but as always, I'm one of your co-hosts, Brian McKay, and I am with... What time is it? Dr. T. Davis. And this has been the Mac and T Show Podcast. Thank you for listening. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows. Sports and world news. Coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian McKay and T Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We're going to the top of becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show.